Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 12th of December. Refugees celebrate as Indian Parliament passes citizenship bill amid protest. Lawyers ransack hospital in row with doctors in Pakistan, patient dies. And U.S. considers leaving smaller number of troops in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. The contentious Citizenship Amendment Bill 2019, which was passed by the Indian Parliament amid protest on Wednesday, has evoked mixed responses. The religion-based bill, which now awaits President's assent, seeks to give citizenship to non-Muslim minorities who fled Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan before 2015. The Upper House of the Indian Parliament, Rajya Sabha, passed the contentious Citizenship Amendment Bill 2019 on Wednesday, evoking mixed responses. The bill was tabled by Indian Interior Minister Amit Shah in the Upper House after it was cleared by Lok Sabha, the Lower House of the Parliament, earlier on Monday. Refugees leaving across India celebrated on Thursday after the clearing of the religious-based bill, which will give citizenship to Buddhists, Christians, Hindus, Jains, Parsis and Sikhs who fled Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan before 2015. They expressed that it has given them a new ray of hope as they migrated to India due to religious persecution back in their home country. <laughs> Meanwhile, protests against the bill turned violent on Wednesday in India's ethnically diverse northeastern region. Indigenous groups have said giving citizenship to illegal immigrants will affect opportunities available to them. तो बहुत कई कई जगह में ऐसा हुआ है कि इंडिजिनस पीपल दे बिकेम द माइनॉरिटी और उन लोग का ये आशंका है जैसे कि अपना जमीन अपना ये खेती खेतीबाड़ी और नौकरी में ये सब सभी में असर आ रहा है द बिल विल नाउ नीड इंडियन प्रेसिडेंट रामनाथ कोविंद्स एसेंट फॉर इट टू बिकम लॉ Pakistan yet again resorted to ceasefire violation along the border in Punch district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday. Locals have expressed fear for loss of life over the regular cross-border firing in the region, which has disturbed their everyday life. Regular cross-border firing and mortar shelling by Pakistan have made everyday life difficult said locals in Katwa district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir. On Wednesday, Pakistan violated ceasefire in Hiranagar sector of Katwa by initiating unprovoked firing along the line of control. Several houses were damaged in the heavy firing by Pakistani troops as mortar shells landed in civilian areas of Hiranagar sector. Pakistan is firing at night, about 8 Meanwhile, three civilians were also injured on Wednesday in Pakistani firing along the border in Poch district of Jammu and Kashmir. Indian security officials blame that Pakistan attempts to push a number of infiltrators during such ceasefire violations. Moving on, the United States has welcomed the indictment of Islamist militant Hafiz Saeed that the Mumbai terror attack mastermind and chief of the band JUD and urged Pakistan to ensure a full prosecution and expeditious trial in line with its international obligations. 
Acting Assistant Secretary of State for South Central Asian Affairs, Alice Wells, has welcomed the indictment of Hafiz Said, the Mumbai terror attack mastermind and founder of lashkar e taiba militant group. U.S. diplomat Wells in a tweet on Wednesday welcomed the move and urged Pakistan to ensure a full prosecution and expeditious trial in line with its international obligations. Said was indicted on Wednesday by a Pakistani anti-terrorism court along with three of his close aides on terror financing charges. The anti-terrorism court in Lahore indicted Said, Hafiz Abdul Salam bin Muhammad, Muhammad Ashraf and Zafar Iqbal in the presence of the accused. Said is blamed by the US and India for four-day Mumbai siege in which 160 people were killed. The dead also included several foreigners including US citizens. The indictment came ahead of a World Financial Watchdog Financial Action Task Force or FETF meeting early next year to decide whether to blacklist Pakistan for its failure to curb terror financing. In news from Pakistan, a 70-year-old patient died after more than 100 lawyers stormed and ransacked a hospital in Pakistan to avenge what they said an assault by doctors on a fellow advocate. The attackers forced doctors and nurses to flee, leaving patients in emergency and intensive care unattended. More than 100 lawyers stormed and ransacked a hospital in Pakistan on Wednesday to avenge what they said was an assault by doctors there on a fellow advocate. A 70-year-old female patient died during the disturbance, authorities said, with hospital staff claiming the rioters broke everything when they stormed the cardiology hospital's intensive care unit. Doctors and nurses were forced to flee the hospital during the violence as protesters fired gunshots, threw stones and bricks and set a police van on fire, according to authorities. Lahore government officials Kamran Ali said the lawyers were enraged over what they said was the beating by doctors of a lawyer at the hospital over his refusal to get in a queue of patients. वकीलों ने एकदम आईसीयू में भी हमला किया आईसीयू में जब हमला किया हम सारे जो पेशेंट के साथ हैं हमने हाथ जोड़े हैं हाथ जोड़ के सबको कह के आपकी मेहरबानी लेडीज रोई हैं वहां पे कि आप बाहर निकल जाएं बाहर निकल जाएं लेकिन वो नहीं शीशे तोड़ दिए कुर्सीएं तोड़ दिए सब को तोड़ दिए डॉक्टरों को छुपा छुपा के लेके उधर जाके उन्होंने सेफ किया कि कमरे में इधर सेफ हो जाए Riot police had to use tear gas to quell the mob and were seen arresting several of the lawyers. Prime Minister Imran Khan's office has launched an investigation into the incident. It is a shame that some people would go and attack a hospital, his spokesman Nadeem Afzal Chan said. Top Pentagon officials told the U.S. House Armed Services Committee on Wednesday that they are considering several options to reduce the number of troops in Afghanistan. Defense Secretary Mark Esper said he is interested in reducing force presence to reallocate them. The United States is considering several options to reduce the number of troops in Afghanistan, including one that would shift to a narrower counter-terrorism mission. Top Pentagon officials told U.S. House Armed Services Committee on Wednesday. Defense Secretary Mark Esper, who testified alongside General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said that commanders have told him that the U.S. can reduce its presence in Afghanistan and still perform the counter-terrorism mission. Uh, I'm interested in reducing our force presence for the same reason I just outlined for Mr. Garamundi. I want to reallocate forces. So. Uh, I, think, uh, I, 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 I think we need to make sure that we can do that. And the, the best way forward in, in Afghanistan is through a political agreement that allows us a long-term sustainable path that ensures that uh, the government in charge does not allow that safe haven to exist. I appreciate your statement. Members of the House Armed Services Committee also pressed Esper and Milley on lawmakers' demands for a hearing on whether the Pentagon deceived the American people about military progress during the 18-year-long war in Afghanistan. Defense Secretary Esper said it was up to the committee on whether or not to call a hearing. This came after earlier this week a Washington Post report disclosed thousands of pages of documents revealing that government officials for years misled the public about failures in the Afghanistan war. 
In news from Bangladesh, a fair promoting indigenous culture and products of Bangladesh was held recently in the country's capital, Dhaka. Scores of organizations from rural Bangladesh set up stalls showcasing agricultural, food and traditional products manufactured by indigenous people at the grassroots level in the country. A fair promoting indigenous culture and products of Bangladesh was held last week in capital, Dhaka. The four-day fair was held at the Bangladesh Shilpkala Academy, a state-sponsored cultural center. Scores of organizations from rural Bangladesh set up 100 stalls showcasing agriculture, food and traditional products manufactured by indigenous people at the grassroots level in the country. The fair gave a sneak peek of the fascinating culture and craftsmanship of the indigenous people as the pavilion showcased the rich and diverse art and culture. Cultural events were also held where artists dressed in traditional attires enthralled the audiences with their dance performances. Giving a wake-up call to many, the world's first ever marine cemetery in southern India is spreading awareness about the harmful effects of single-use plastics dumped in rivers after use. The cemetery has been built using more than 200 single-use plastic bottles. The world's first ever marine cemetery in India's southern Kozhikoti city is spreading awareness about the harmful effects of single-use plastics by displaying photographs of endangered species on tombstones made of plastic. The graveyard on Baybor Beach is dedicated to critically endangered or vulnerable marine species and has nine tombstones made of plastic trash and iron bars which the makers collected from the beach itself. The idea of the marine cemetery is to send an expression to of shock to the visitors in what they call is the true cost of plastic. The visitors here are also made to take a pledge to give up single-use plastic. A lot of people come to the beach and, and if they see there is a symmetry, this is a symbolic thing and making them aware that if we continue using or if we, if we continue dumping plastics, this is which is going to happen. The world produced about 242 million tons of plastic waste in 2016, according to the World Bank. The UN estimates some 100 million tons have been dumped in the oceans to date. This plastic dump affects marine species as they get injured and sometimes end up eating it. The traditional winter dress, Feiran, has retained its charm among the people since ages in India's Jammu and Kashmir as it scores over the modern winter costumes due to its warmth and comfort to beat the chill. Worn by both men and women as an overcoat, Feirans are also regarded as cultural identity of Kashmir. The traditional winter apparel Feran has retained its charm among the people since ages in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir as it scores over the modern winter costumes due to its warmth and comfort to beat the chill. Feran, traditionally a loose-fitted gown, is worn by both men and women in the Kashmir Valley and acts as an overcoat to help them protect themselves from the bone-chilling cold. The clothing markets in the Kashmir Valley have been buzzing with the surge in sales of the traditional robes, which are also being tailored in different styles and new designs. Peranji is our Kashmir traditional dress, which is our forefathers. Because we can't forget it. Now, what has happened? It has been upgraded. Because the trend of Peran was very low. Today, the new fashion designers have come out. They design it. आजकल तो पब्लिसिटी ऐसी हो गई तो आउटसाइड स्टेट के भी बोलते हैं हमें कश्मीरी फैरन लगाएंगे कि फैशन हाँ फैशन तो जरूरी है फैरन में अब वो पुराने जो पुराने फैरन सिंपल थे वो कम मांगते हैं लोग तो अब नए नए डिजाइन नए नए मतलब जैसे नए नए लड़के हैं in Kashmir, women wear embroidered ferrans with white sleeves while the men wear plain dress with narrow sleeves and left side chest open collar. The garment is so popular among the Kashmiris that it has become synonymous with their identity across the globe. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.